From his affair with Cleopatra to getting kidnapped by pirates. Stay tuned to number one to find out 10 things you didn't know about Julius Caesar. Number 10. The Birth of Caesar Born on the 13th of July, 100 BC, this great leader, warrior, and dictator would become a name that would be remembered for centuries. Known by most simply as Julius Caesar, his full name was Gaius Julius Caesar, and he was named after his father, who shared the exact same name. Caesar had two sisters, named Julia Major and Julia Minor, and his mother's name was Aurelia Cota. Common belief is that Julius was born through Caesarean section, but although it was a method that was already in use by that time, the mother of the newborn rarely survived, and it would only be used in a case where the mother was in critical medical condition. Instead, it is thought that one of his ancestors were born through Caesarean section, and that was the beginning of the namesake. Theories of this being the origin of the name come from the Latin word for cut, being Caesus. But there are also other possible origins behind the name. For example, there is Caesaris, which means long hair in Latin, or Caesite, which is the act of killing an elephant in battle. Number 9. Caesar's Early Years Caesar was born into a ruling family in Rome, and despite them being one of the main ruling families, they were not originally politically influential. Things began to change, though, after his father was made governor of the Roman province of Asia. During Caesar's early teen years, a war broke out between his uncle, Gaius Marius, and his bitter rival, Lucius Cornelius Sulla. His father was killed in the war, and at the age of just 16, Caesar was made the head of the family. He then married the daughter of one of his uncle's allies, but was ordered to divorce her after Sulla was victorious in the war. But Caesar refused to divorce his wife, and to keep his love, he fled Italy, where he was staying at the time, by enrolling in the military where he first served under the province of Asia before changing to serve under Cilicia. Number 8. Kidnapped by Pirates In the year 78 BC, Caesar was in his 20s when he learned that Sulla had passed. As such, he returned to Rome and reclaimed his inheritance in the house that had been confiscated after he fled. He lived there for three years before setting out for the Aegean island of Rhodes in order to study oratory under the famed professor Apollonius Molon. Before we talk about the connection to pirates though, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to Zero to Hero using the buttons below. While in transit to Rhodes, Caesar was kidnapped by pirates and held hostage on board their ship, and they demanded 20 talents of silver for his safe return. Talents were a unit of weight in those times, and one talent weighed about 75 pounds. At today's prices, a talent is estimated to be valued at around $1.4 million. Caesar insisted that they ask for 50 talents, however, so that they had more money to spend while he hunted them down after his release. Eventually, the ransom was paid to the pirates, and Caesar was released. He then immediately raised a fleet of ships and pursued the pirates, capturing them and crucifying them, just as he said he would while he was captured. Number 7. The Gallic Wars The Gallic Wars are believed to be Caesar's greatest conquest, and it wasn't just one long battle, but a series of battles in the same region. In this case, it was the Gaul region, and the entire conquest lasted for over eight years. Gaul covered the area that is present-day France and Belgium, and Caesar was heavily outmanned in the battles that took place there. But with his leadership and ability, he led his troops to victory each time. The entire war consisted of eight battles, with the greatest battle taking place at Elysia. It was the last of the great battles between the two nations, and it is possibly the most defining battle out of Caesar's entire conquest, as it cemented his victory against the Gaul. His success threatened the leader Pompey, and in 50 BC, Caesar was ordered to disband his army before returning home. But he refused, and crossed the border through the Rubicon River. His actions sparked a civil war against Pompey and his recently allied Senate. Number 6. Creation of the Leap Year Before Caesar's time in power, the Romans, and in fact most of the world, worked off of a 355-day year, and while Roman officials were meant to add extra days to the lunar calendar each year in order to keep it aligned with the seasons, it didn't always happen. This resulted in the calendar becoming extremely confusing, and farming and the like fell out of sequence with the seasons, causing problems with the crops. 
This calendar system was even abused by politicians who used the confusing calendar to extend their time in power. Caesar consulted with the astronomer Saucyens, and they began implementing a new system. It was to be called the Julian calendar and would consist of a 365-day year. This took effect in 45 BC, and because each year is actually 365 and a quarter days long, Caesar added an extra day, called a leap day, every four years in order to make up for the difference. Number 5. Caesar the Dictator Caesar was first appointed as dictator in 49 BC and was re-elected the following year to continue his reign. Roman dictators were given a wide range of power, and they were entrusted with the full authority of the state and were usually left to deal with the military or to watch over some specific area. Then in 46 BC, after the Egyptian civil war had ended and Caesar had won multiple battles against the remaining supporters of his former ally turned enemy, Pompey, he was appointed dictator for at least the next 10 years. But then, just two years later, in 44 BC, Caesar was appointed a dictator in perpetuity, and he used his power to fill the Senate with his supporters, raising the amount of senators to 900, thus ensuring that he would remain in power and that no one could consider overthrowing him. Number 4. Caesar and Cleopatra 49 BC saw the start of the Great Roman Civil War, with Caesar driving Pompey's army out of Italy and then later in Spain. After his defeat in Spain, Pompey fled to Egypt and Caesar followed after him in an attempt to end the war once and for all. Unfortunately for Caesar though, by the time he had arrived in Egypt, Pompey had already been assassinated and Caesar then aided Egypt's own civil war. It is believed that the pharaoh Ptolemy XIII actively tried to keep Cleopatra away from Caesar, but she managed to smuggle herself into camp by rolling herself up in a carpet and having herself delivered to him. Caesar was married at the time to Calpurnia, but her visit sparked an affair between the two that lasted years. And many believe that if Caesar was allowed to wed somebody not of Roman birth, that he would have married her too. Number 3. Caesar's Children it is well known that historic leader Genghis Khan still has an estimated 16 million living descendants today, while it is also believed that Caesar has no living descendants, at least none that are known of. Caesar is only known to have had three children, despite being known as a womanizer. His firstborn was a daughter with his wife Cornelia, who he later married off to his then ally Pompey. The second born was thought to be a son with Cleopatra herself, although some dispute whether Caesar was actually the father of Cleopatra's son. He believed that he was, and as such, he was unable to leave his kingdom to him because he was raised as an Egyptian and was born out of wedlock. Caesar's third child was an adopted son he had taken on to inherit his kingdom, as he had no sons through wedlock that could continue his name. Number 2. The Death of Caesar the events surrounding Caesar's death are quite well known through different writings from the time, and it is through this that we know that there were around 30 people involved in his assassination, stabbing him a total of 23 times. Contrary to popular belief, however, and thanks to Shakespeare's play on Julius Caesar, most people believe that his last words were, a tu Brute, meaning, you too, Brutus? But in actual fact, many people that have witnessed his death wrote that his final words were, Kaisu Technon, meaning you too, child? This information offers some evidence towards some other theories surrounding his death. Many believe that Brutus was Caesar's son, having an affair with his mother some years prior. His actual final words offer two interesting points to note. First, that Brutus was one of the main people involved in his assassination, a theory that most people already suspected. But second, that Caesar knew, or at least suspected, that Brutus was his child, having called him son in his dying moments. Number 1. Rome After Caesar As we have mentioned before, Caesar had no sons that could continue his name, and thereby continue his dynasty or inherit his wealth. He remedied this by adopting his great-nephew Octavian and making him his sole heir. Octavian was granted great power, and after Caesar's death he tried to uphold Caesar's legacy. Caesar's death had caused a civil war, and by the end of it the Roman Republic had collapsed and Octavian was made the de facto emperor of Rome. Throughout the war, Rome was transformed from a barely functioning republic to a monarch empire that lasted for the next 1400 years. On the 1st of January, 42 BC, Octavian was given the title Divus Julius, meaning the Divine Julius. 
and became the first ever Roman to be compared to a deity. Even today, we are reminded of Caesar's legacy each year because shortly before Caesar was assassinated, the month of quintiles was renamed to July in honor of Julius Caesar. What do you think the most significant moment is in Julius Caesar's history? Let us know in the comments below and take care.